Good morning. Good morning. Happy Sunday, everybody. Amen. Amen. Happy, Amen. happy, happy. That's right. That's right. I mean, you're here. We're here. That's enough to make us happy. God's here. We are indeed happy to be here because we haven't been here. <laughs> I'll explain that one in a minute. So, uh, good morning. We're here from Living Water Church anticipating um, just a great time with the Lord today. Um, just, just loving on Him and Him loving on us. So, and we're loving on you. So, I think if you're not with us now, hopefully you'll be with us later. And at 10 o'clock, we'll be gathering together here at Living Water Church at 1463 Railroad, Railroad, Railroad Street. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to say exactly that today. Drive. Railroad, Railroad Drive. Drive. Well, thank you. Um, well, you're welcome. Uh, Railroad Drive in McKinleyville. And we hope uh, many of you will be able to join us. But we have, and, and this is a pun, a timely message, I believe, today to bring... Um, from Ecclesiastes called, What Time Is It? What Time Is It? I, I was writing that and I thought, I often ask a question in my title. So I'm posing that question today based on Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1, that says, For everything there is a season and a time for every matter or every purpose under heaven, depending on which translation you use so i'm just going to open this up in prayer and get right to the heart of this matter so father god today today lord we are so blessed that we can call on your name that we can worship you that we can freely freely praise you lift you up lord we have a desire to lift you up today above all things to minister to you god to you, God, you who has called us out of darkness into this light uh, that we're given. And we're praying that you will increase our understanding of you today, of who you are. We're praying for wisdom to discern the times we are living in. Give us that discernment. God, we ask according to your will, because you have told us in your word that you are pleased when we ask you for wisdom. And um, we are praying for how to respond to that wisdom you give us. So here we are, God, depending on you for all things. And again, we are lifting up your name, giving you all honor, all praise, all glory that is due to you today. In Jesus' precious name, amen. 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 So Paul and I have made uh, a few trips. <laughs> um, we'll have to stop counting soon, but to Missouri lately to help Paul's elderly sister with some issues that have cropped up in her golden years that aren't so golden. And if you're going to fly right now during these times, um, whatever your years are, they're not so golden. <laughs> Flying is not easy um and the phrase time waits for no man that's true for us humans and it becomes more relevant every time we look in the mirror we have lots of tricks up our sleeves uh, i think there's something called just for men or miss clairol uh, oil of olay uh, but ultimately time plays its hand and we all wake up older than we've ever been before every day every day <laughs> every day oh am i older than i was yesterday yes you are and so am i um when you travel through time zones you begin doing that odd math equation let's see um we got our wake-up call at 4 a.m in missouri um in kansas city which was actually 2 a.m in california so now that we're home or when we got home last night and it was 8 p.m., it was actually 10 p.m. in Missouri, 
either way, no matter how you add it up, it was bedtime. It was bedtime. It's a five and a half hour drive from the airport in Sacramento. So um, it, it was a long day. It was a long day. Um, in this year, I, I hear people say has been a long year and it's, it's moving into a long two years. Oh um, yeah. Wow. Wow. Time waits for no man. Our opening scripture from Ecclesiastes is familiar even to the secular world. Um, there was a song popular in the 60s written by Pete Seeger. It was called Turn, Turn, Turn. And it was from Ecclesiastes chapter 3. And I think you have that there. I do have it. Go ahead and read verses 1 through 8. We'll just, we'll oh just my goodness. tackle the whole enchilada All right. from there. To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to gain and a time to lose a time to keep, and a time to throw away, a time to tear, and a time to sow, a time to keep silence, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time to war, and a time of peace, a time for all things. Amen. Sometimes we get caught up in a time or a common phrase uh, today is the season that we're in. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we get, we get caught up in that and begin to identify our life according to that season. Mm -hmm. When in fact it is just a season and we are in the process of going through that season. Amen. I knew he would not be able to read that scripture without, <laughs> <laughs> and that's okay. I look forward to the wisdom that God has given me through Pastor Paul, and we're going to talk about that uh, because this is actually continuing on uh, the the last few weeks in the messages, we've brought this concept of asking the question, what time is it? Um, if you read the book of Ecclesiastes that is believed to be, have been written by Solomon, um, it appears to be a dissertation on disillusionment, <laughs> even depression by Solomon. He had all the wisdom in the world, literally, and most of the wealth and power. Yet, he eventually came to the conclusion that apart from God, it was all meaningless. God, who is all-knowing, all-powerful, and owns everything, also owns time. And I'm grabbing this scripture because on the issue of the, the things we're dealing with, um, with regard to Paul's sister is sometimes we labor, we labor, we labor. And um, here, he, here, here we are. In, in chapter 2, verse 20, Solomon is, Solomon is saying, Therefore I turned my heart and despaired of all the labor in which I had toiled under the sun. For there is a man whose labor is with wisdom and knowledge and skill yet he must leave his heritage to a man 
who has not labored mm. for it. This is this also is vanity and a great evil for what has man for all his labor and for the striving of his heart with which he has toiled under the, the sun. Um, so, so Solomon really addresses a lot of the questions that go through our minds sometimes when we're just having a pity party and, 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 and asking ourselves, well, why am I really here? What have I really accomplished? All of these issues that surround our dreams, our hopes, our desires. And, and lately, the world is fearful. The, the world is saying, what about everything we treasure and value? What is going on? What's happening uh, to the world today? Everything we have in this life is borrowed from God. Yeah. And we possess it by His grace on that basis. We are stewards of everything He's given us even our dreams, even our visions. And I know that as parents, we always want to leave a legacy to our children and our grandchildren. In fact, our grandchildren are the legacy that we, we get most excited about for that reason. And in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8, it says, But do not overlook this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord... One day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. But we deal with time based on our lifetime. And because of that, we have dreams and visions of what we expect to accomplish in that lifetime. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 17, it says, And the world is passing away along with its desires. But whoever does the will of God abides forever that's good news do you think what uh when peter was speaking there about uh a thousand years is as a day and a day is a thousand years do you think he was making a, an accurate comparison of time in heaven or if he was saying you know time is nothing in heaven in in eternity mm -hmm. there is no time uh, in fact, I, I have uh, often thought of how, how do we explain eternity and time? And one of the things that came to me was that uh, if we were to draw a circle, make it as big as you want, but draw a circle. Within that circle, draw a straight line. That straight line represents time. Eternity is all around it and either end of it, but it's just a little span in the midst of eternity. Amen. Time had a beginning, time has an end. All within eternity, and eternity is like the circle without end. Just a little commentary. Well, you're, you're very profound this morning. <laughs> <laughs> I think I told someone uh, the other day, this life isn't even, doesn't even amount to a glance in the rear view mirror compared to eternity. Well, you know, Paul said something like that in Romans 8, 18, when he said, he I reckon that the sufferings of this present world are not worthy even to be compared with the glory that we shall receive. And we are dealing with the reality of our concept of time and and so God gives us through scripture that wisdom that we need in order to cope with that reality during the time we have here that's right um, pastor Paul spoke a few weeks ago um, and gave an exhortation that we need to pray until something happens push that's not just a clever acronym it's about the kind of prayer that moves God and changes us, even in our circumstances, even in our limitations uh, with regard to time and our time here on this earth. Um, and my message after that, the following week, was about moving forward with God. Time waits for no man. 
we are moving forward. Nothing can stop that forward progress of time. We can only choose whether or not to move forward with God or to advance the plans of the enemy to destroy the earth, to destroy God's people, to demolish our hopes and dreams. Um, he already knows he can't destroy God, but he wants to destroy God's treasured possession. And he wants us to destroy our image of who God really is. Amen. Amen. You know, uh, this is interesting, uh, a, a statement that, that you made about uh, moving the heart of God. Uh, when, uh, in the way I understand it is when we pray and we truly seek the face of God, seeking him, it's not God who has moved. It is we who are moved into that position where God's will can be expressed upon us and through us. So I, I, I see it often uh, as not me begging God to move, although I do that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but it was it is more put me in a position where you can release your grace, your spirit upon me so that through me can flow to our community, to the people around us, the healing, the deliverance, the freedom that Jesus Christ offers. It, we, we don't have to move God for people. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it, I tell you how much he loves people. For God to love the world, John Amen. 3, 16. That's right. <laughs> that, that he gave his only begotten son. Mm -hmm. That whoever believes upon him, upon him would not perish, but would have everlasting life. And so it's not as much us moving God as moving ourselves into position where God can fulfill his will and purposes through us. Amen. 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 Be still and know that I am God. Amen. Putting ourselves in that position. And last week... Paul spoke about, Pastor Paul spoke about the prayer of Solomon in the glory days of Solomon's dreams uh, and visions in those days when he had a different perspective on life because he was right on the verge of beginning to walk out those dreams, particularly of building the temple. And um, Paul spoke about what led up to that prayer in last week's message. And we love to quote seven second chronicles seven fourteen. i see it so much we quote it almost as if it's a spell <laughs> yeah. we can cast i i think we have to be really careful in second chronicles seven fourteen that i'm referring to says if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. And I really, really appreciated the message last week about the things, the events, the pattern, really, that led up to Solomon um, praying to God to hear and respond and God's response to Solomon with that very verse, the words of that verse. He said, if my people would humble themselves, if my people would pray and seek my face, if my people would turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear. So yesterday in our travels, we, uh, in that drive home from the airport, we really enjoy road trips, driving, because yeah. it seems to be when God begins to download things to us that that um, in the form of assignments, vision that we're supposed to carry forward. And yesterday we had a discussion about whether or not it's time for us to be more vocal about what we see happening to our values, what we see happening, the trend of what is happening uh, in our country today. 
Ecclesiastes that we referred to asks the question, is it time to cast away stones or a time to gather stones together? And, you know, what prompted that discussion was there is and continues to be such polarization of perspectives with regard to the pandemic, with regard to how we're to conduct ourselves in the middle of a pandemic. Also, of course, politically, there is issue after issue issues that we thought were resolved and that we were moving forward on we seem to be revisiting some of those issues only god can answer that question is it time to cast stones or is it just time to gather them <laughs> we could do a study just on that um, and we can only hear god's direction on that hear his answer through prayer. The consensus of people doesn't answer it. No political faction has the answer. No hero, no, no Wonder Woman, no Superman, and no amount of bickering can achieve it. Achieve what? Achieve gaining the wisdom we need to move forward through the season we now face today in this time. Amen. I'm, I'm watching your face <laughs> to see if there's something you'd like to add yeah, to that. Yeah. Yeah, well, we, we are definitely in a season where we must be coming to God, seeking his face. Amen. Crying out to him. Uh, I've, I've seen so many uh, movements uh, on Facebook. You can find them easily. Uh, but they're talking about uh, praying, fighting the spiritual battle, and uh, asking God to intervene in this situation. And I read that, and, and I hear those prayers, and the, I've attended some of the prayer meetings, uh, and they're, they're just, the prayers are just so perfunctory they're just you know it's almost like the now i lay me down to sleep prayer oh, yeah. Yeah. you know I'm, I'm praying because i know i'm supposed to pray but there's no real passion yes. no no sense of urgency uh in the prayer the consequence is those prayers are not effective james said the effectual fervent, fervent. prayer of a righteous person gets a lot of stuff done. What makes a prayer effectual? Prayer of faith and prayer of fervency, urgency. I, I, I've got to see you move, God. If I don't see you move, then something horrible is going to happen. I must see you move, God. Again, I don't hear that kind of urgency that often. Amen. Amen. Uh, I was telling uh, Pastor uh, Jane just yesterday on the airplane, I was reading uh, a book that is written about past times of awakening. And, it, and mm -hmm. the section I was reading was talking about the revival in Wales. And it, it, when it gave the revival that would break up break out in a community in Wales, uh, it would also refer that for months, even years before the outbreak of revival, people had been on their face seeking God, diligently crying out in repentance and supplication mm -hmm. that God would move. Mm -hmm. I've read books about the Azusa revival that we've heard so much about over the years. In 1906, we read how the Holy Spirit fell and there were marvelous manifestations uh, of the power of God. And we look at that and say, we want that again. Mm -hmm. But if you read the accounts of what was happening before then, you yeah. realize that it didn't come cheap and it wasn't easy. 
but there were many, many hundreds of people across that LA area that were desperately crying out to God for hours, sometimes all night long, mm -hmm. seeking God for a mighty revival. What's interesting to me is that their concern was the wickedness of the land in that day. Mm -hmm. Now let's, let's go back almost 120 years and see, is the land still wicked? Oh, it, is it, is it Way as more, wicked as yeah. it was then? <laughs> ah, my friend, many times more wicked. And today we must cry out. And I don't know if it will take a prayer all day long today, if it will take a prayer in for a week or a month or a year. I don't know. But if we don't get serious about seeking God for a move, we will not see him do what he wants to do and what he's promised to do. Amen, amen, amen. As you can see, we are passionate about this. We talk about it often. It is down to the very basic fundamental thing that God told us to do in scripture. It is amen. our reasonable response. And um, yes, Evil has prospered, but it is when people pray. Yes. It is when that pattern you spoke of last week, when when a nation would fall away and then return and seek the face of God. Yes. And we have that phrase with prayer and supplication. What you're talking about, I think, is supplication. supplication. That's another message, but it's the same message. The way we pray does matter. And if we do not pray, with an intention to listen and respond to what God tells us, we are not going to move forward. I realize that Billy Joel probably isn't quoted from the pulpit. <laughs> not much. Not often. Uh, but then again, as I was thinking about that, he wrote a song about honesty <laughs> being a lonely word. And another song uh, where he said, I love you just the way you are. So uh, there are some principles there. But the song that was going through my head this morning was, this is the time the name of it is this is the time it kept going through my head the the lyrics particularly this verse that says this is the time to remember because it will not last forever these are the days to hold on to because we won't although we'll want to this is the time but time is gonna change you've given me the best of you and now i need the rest of you. Oh, I like that. Statement. I knew you'd like oh, that. Oh, I love that. Because even though he was probably um, singing this as a romantic song to to a, a relationship that he savored and wanted to hold on to, is God not saying by these directives as far as the way we pray? Now I need the rest of you. I need the rest of you. God mm. is telling his people, I need all of you. What time is it? It's time to pray with the understanding that we can only move forward with God and to do otherwise will result in doom and despair. Solomon was trying to tell us that in Ecclesiastes. God will move, but he won't make an exception by allowing us to bypass time and skip the steps that he outlined in Second yeah. Chronicles. No matter who quotes it or how often or how pretty the background is on the meme <laughs> where that scripture is quoted, I... I love memes, I, I, I use them to encourage people, but they don't replace the reality of how our real lives and real conversations look behind them. In other words, the emphasis that is provided there is how does our life line up? Sometimes I see these memes and I wanna say, 
I want to hear your original words. I want to hear you speak your heart. Um, anyway, I'm, 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 I'm going to move back off of that. He says we are to humble ourselves. We have to acknowledge that time is in his hands. And apart from God, we are powerless. Pray, he says. That refers, as we've been talking about, to that push acronym, Paul. Pray until something happens, but it also refers to a deep, fervent, submitted prayer. Not the now I lay me down to sleep yeah. type prayer. A deep, submitted. What, for whatever reason, that usually only happens out of desperation and out of desperate circumstances when we truly recognize our need of him. It says to seek his face. That means we have to let go of the way we'd like to see things done, who we think he should deal with. God, take care of that person. We need to ask God to take care of that person in the mirror. We would rather point a finger than deal with ourselves in our own condition. Um, turning from our wicked ways. What are our wicked ways? I don't need to list them. You know what's wicked. <laughs> I know what's wicked. Um, but sometimes we um, like to skip over the fact that God hates hate. And God loves love. Turning from our wicked ways means that we have to turn from hate, pointing a finger to others, refusing to forgive. Anything that misrepresents God's love is not of God. He says, then he will hear us. So we're continuing to look at that scripture with, an, with the acknowledgement before God that, well, I'll just speak for myself. I don't think I'm there yet. I don't think I'm humble enough. I don't think I've turned enough. There are little things. It may seem like little, but I'm trying to do. I'm trying to be more aware of the grace we've been given, of the privilege we have, um, the, the food we have to eat, everything that we have by the grace of God. I want to be more mindful. I need to be more humble about these things. And um, if we're feeling as if we aren't being heard, and I know some people are feeling as though God isn't hearing us, um, we need to take the steps on that path we've been given in our generation. That's our only option. What time is it? It's time to pray with the understanding that we cannot and will not circumvent God's authority in his plan. Why am I belaboring this point? Maybe it seems like I am. Um, it's still deep in my spirit. How are we to respond, Lord, to what we see happening? I have been feeling in my spirit that we, and I am speaking, I, I'll go ahead and be vocal and admit here that I feel like I am speaking prophetically that we are about to experience a sudden and profound change. I'm talking about the collective we here, all of us here, our nation, even our world, mankind itself. It seems as though we are on the edge of experiencing the consequences that mankind has made up until now. I'm not just talking about sin and decisions that I clearly see in Scripture point to the fact that uh, they are contrary to God's word and his will and his plan. Um, and it's not just that. It's our lack of understanding 
of our dependence on God and our lack of humility, if you will. But I don't want to veer off of this. It seems like we just aren't getting what God is trying to show us. And a profound and cataclysmic event will get our attention. Whether or not that event is good or bad follows that same pattern that we've been speaking of. When God's people turned back to him, he forgave, he healed, and he reconciled. How far does God have to go to get our attention? I don't know. He does. But I also know that historically, historically, in time, when God's people turned towards him, prayed with that understanding, yes. truly sought his face, truly turned from wicked ways, including disregarding God, hmm. moving forward in, in, the, in the concept that, well, we got what we need. Let everyone else get what they need and we're, we're fine. We're okay. In fact, it speaks of that in Revelation, doesn't it? We have need of nothing. Go ahead. Well, we are right now trying to do our part to not only become awakened ourselves, yes. but for our community to become awakened and for the church, the body of Christ, to become awakened to the fact that the world is so bad just now. The wickedness is so great. People who have taken truth and perverted it and finally said there is no truth. What is truth? We are in a time when God's people, you and I, must begin to pray and seek the face of God as we have never prayed before. Oh, you say, I've prayed, yes. I, I've wept, yes. But I'm telling you, today's situation, his circumstances, the wickedness of this world today is so dire that we must become more desperate than we've ever been in seeking the face of God and seeing God do what he has promised and what he truly wants to do among us amen amen i can't say it enough let's not and and boy i am saying it enough because our time is running out but but we cannot allow ourselves to be diverted diverted according to the enemy's plan by confusion by disagreement by arguments by foolish and fruitless arguments we know what God says is good is good. What God says is evil is evil. Whether or not we become more vocal about that, we must be led of God. Amen. And we'll get that message when we pray. Amen. We need to submit ourselves to our directions from the Lord as far as our response in these times. And again, we are about to experience a profound and sudden change. We have that opportunity to affect that by the way we pray and the way we respond to God and acknowledge Amen. and declare who He is. He is the all-knowing. He is the all-powerful. He is the good God. Amen. He is the only way, Jesus Christ is the only way, truth, and life for us. So that's all we're here to say today. I sure appreciate you being with us, uh, participating in this. We would love to hear your response. We would love to hear what you're hearing from God as you pray with the understanding. Share that with us. Please uh, feel free to comment. Give us a call. We can be reached at 707-630-3167. That's a landline. That's a church line. It has a private uh, voicemail. Um, that uh, Whatever you'd like to share with us, please feel free to either do a private message or give us a call. 
big deal. We again are so thankful and grateful uh, to be with you today, and we pray God's great blessing over you as you begin to apply the things that he's showing us. Amen. Amen. I, w I would like to say, too, just as we're wrapping this up, that we would uh, encourage you that if you like these messages that we bring, and if you feel like that this is a good thing, would you please just click on that like button? The only way we have to know if we are reaching our congregation, reaching our community, reaching people who care, is if you click that like button, that lets us know. Amen. And if you know others that would benefit from hearing these messages, just click on share, uh, and we would uh, be more than blessed for your friends to see and hear these same words that you're hearing. So we just want to say, be blessed. Let God be God <laughs> in your life, and Amen. you will see him do great, mighty, and wonderful things. Yes, and amen. Amen. <laughs> Take care.